lots of leaves today, and are those flower buds on top of the branch or fruit? You decide. Hi everyone, I'm Catherine, the artist behind Bigelow Fine Arts. I'm continuing my journey through the enchanted forest, following the trail and enjoying fresh raspberries as I seek the mystery that awaits in the castle at the center of the forest. I spy two cute long-tailed oven birds watching me as I enjoy the berries. I'm coming back to the branch and working up the bud things on the top. I figured, since there were already leaves open, that these might be flower buds, although I guess they could be fruit. I give them a base layer of violet purple with extra layers on the opening center part. If this is your first time here, welcome! Otherwise, welcome back! This video is part of a series. You can find the rest of the series up in the cards. But feel free to jump in right here, grab your colors, and come color these leaves with me. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button so you can catch the rest of the color along. For my next layer, I am coming in with a light layer of Delft Blue. I don't want to wash out the violet I just put down, but I want to darken it up just a little, so I'm putting in a light layer over the whole outside part of this bud. I am thinking of it as a flower bud. That was my first thought until I was almost finished coloring it in. I come in with blue-violet next, and I am adding in a layer, mostly to the outside of the bud, leaving the inner part lighter in color, and the darker center portion. I come back with the purple violet and I blend in all of the colors together to make sure the bud is well filled in and rich in color.
Finally, for the center portion, I blend in some light magenta over top to help lighten up the color a little and bring in a reddish tone as well. To help with the shading on the sides, I come in with sepia and add in a dark stripe down each side of the bud with a light blend into the middle just to smooth out the gradient. I don't need a lot, just a touch of shading. And those buds are finished. Don't forget to go and work up the ones on the other side. They should come together quickly now. Now for the little leaves at the top center of the branch. I decided to work them up almost like the other little leaves from the vine. I begin with a base layer of olive green yellowish over the little leaves. I will also do those two slightly larger leaves on the top of the branch in a similar fashion, so keep an eye out for that later. I then come in with the chrome oxide green and flick in color from the bottom of each leaf up towards the top. I want the bottom filled in, but I'm not worried about how well the top gets filled in. In fact, the chrome oxide green shouldn't go more than halfway up the leaf, or slightly higher. These are small leaves. For something slightly different, I decided to blend the colors with earth green.
For the lower leaves, I blend in more olive green yellowish. I am mostly keeping the color to the bottom and one side of the leaf, like a shadow. With burnt sienna, I fill in the forgotten stem for these leaves, and now I can move on to the larger leaves on the bottom of the branch. For the larger leaves, I am going with the one leaf at the beginning to get down my colors and patterns. Sometimes this isn't that important because the area is small, like the buds, but when a color goes wrong, like in my peachy disaster, doing one leaf is helpful. So I come in with earth green and I fill in one entire leaf. Obviously, once I know where the color needs to be, I don't need to go overboard. But for the first leaf, sometimes it helps to start with a base layer over the entire object. If you remember back to the window pane leaves, I filled in the first leaf completely in red before figuring out where I wanted each color to be. The colors are light enough that I can generally cover with other colors as I build up layers. Now I come in with the chrome oxide green and I fill in the ribs and the part of the outline. I debated on filling in the whole outline, but I felt like that might be a little heavy handed. So I put in a layer around the inner part, creating like a raised center effect. I blended in some olive green yellowish on top and immediately regretted it, so skip the olive green. I come back in with the chrome oxide green and darken up the ribs and the shading effect even more. I blended in more earth green on top and I gave each center section a small gradient, with the earth green a little darker near the center ribs. I blended in more olive green yellowish and still didn't like it, so I decided it wasn't going to be part of these leaves. I blended in more earth green to mask the olive, darkened up the ribs again, and moved on to the next leaf. This leaf I am again working solo as I wanted to make sure skipping the olive green would be for the best. So I darkened up the ribs and part of the outline with chrome oxide green, feathering the color out a little to prevent a harsh transition of color.
I blend in earth green, adding in more layers to the portion near the ribs to give it a slightly darker appearance. I come back with both colors again to smooth out gradients, make sure everything is blended well, and that I have enough layers on the page. And yes, this leaf worked so much better without the olive green. It is subtle on the screen, but I can see that the olive green was just giving it a yellowish cast that wasn't working. Now I can go through and finish off the rest of the leaves hanging off this branch. I begin with the chrome oxide green and I fill in all of the ribs and add in any shading to the outer section if the leaf has an outer section. The leaves seem to come in a couple of different styles, but I stick to the pattern as best I can. Time for the earth green and I go through adding in as many layers as it takes to fill in the paper and get a smooth fill. I try to add in more layers at the center near the ribs to give a slightly darker effect.
I realized as I was filling in with the earth green that the large pillowy leaf hanging down was also attached to the vine. I had to decide if I wanted to add it into the same color scheme or go with different colors later. I opted to add it into the group, coming in with chrome oxide green and filling in the outline. But I have done this same style leaf on a previous page, but with the red colors. So maybe this is the spring version of that same fall leaf. I blend in the earth green on top and for each section I add in extra layers around the edges leaving the center slightly lighter in color. I touch up with a little chrome oxide green and that is this half of the leaves on the branch complete. Time to go through and work up the other side while I still remember what colors go where. It will work up the same way. Thanks for joining me today on this adventure into the enchanted forest. Let me know below or on social media if you colored along. I'd love to know how your leafy branch turned out. I want to thank you all so much for coming along and joining in with me on this coloring journey. I appreciate all my subscribers and look forward to more of you joining in and coloring along with me. Please like, share, and subscribe to help that happen. Until next time, happy coloring.